Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some summer pruning on specific things. We're gonna talk about why we're gonna be doing summer pruning, what we're gonna be summer pruning, you know, how to do it, what the benefits are to this whole thing. Um, it's important to know that I think this tree here is really responding well. These are my, my cherry trees. Uh, we have black gold and white gold over here, and the both of them I think are responding very well to the cooler nights that we've been getting. It's been getting down into the 60s now, the low 60s here um, in the Pennsylvania area. And this is a good indication now that we're getting into the fall. The fall weather is kind of setting in. It's really quite cooler out here. Um, even the figs are ripening much slower here on the branches, which is not a good sign. Um, at least for the figs, I want them to have as much heat as possible all throughout the year. But these cherry trees are really acting uh, quite well in terms of their woods hardened up, they're dropping all their leaves, they're really um, just an early to, to go dormant tree. And in, and in this particular scenario, I would say it's probably too late to do some summer pruning. Um, you know, we're really gonna be into the fall very soon and summer pruning is called summer pruning because it's in the summer. Um, and this is something you can do all throughout the summer, really. I mean, you could do it when, have, when they have uh, fruits on the trees that have not yet ripened. You can also do this at the end of the summer, which is really, I think now is probably the last moment, the last time of the year that you should probably start thinking about this or doing this. And I think something that's kind of really important here is unfortunately really bringing back these long shoots. And these long shoots just inevitably will not be very productive. They have these, these spurs on them, which is nice, right? On the older wood, that's where the fruit formation is gonna happen. Excuse me, gonna happen. But on this new growth here that's quite vigorous and it's put out its last flush of growth, we wanna kinda of cut this back. We wanna have one more flush of growth before these trees go dormant. And then that way, uh, we can kind of get a better form established, control the size, and then also on these trees, because they're getting pretty tall. I mean, these are semi-dwarfs here, and you can see how tall they are. They're approaching probably, you know, 12, 13 feet. Um, we don't want that, but we also want them to set their spurs, to have a good fruit set for next year. And, and by cutting these things back, as an example, you know, if I make this cut here, it's gonna maybe send out some branches in each location and, and then the rest of this you know it's going to send some different signals there's going to be different hormones now on the plant telling this tree to then send out some spurs and this is going to increase our production for the next year um, so this is important for a couple reasons right getting ourselves a nice controlled size to our trees but then also getting the the fruiting spurs the fruiting wood more productive um, you know, on something like an apricot, as an example, it's going to fruit on this two-year-old growth that you see over here. And this is where these spurs are right here. These very small looking spurs, you can see it from here to here. So that's where the fruit is going to form, but then also on this new growth that it put out this year. And that's kind of what I want to focus on now is to try to get as much of this new growth from really realistically, this this new stuff here is probably not going to to cut it. It's not going to put out any spurs. We're probably not going to have much fruit up here. We may have some fruit down here, and we'll probably have even more fruit on the older one-year-old wood here. So I'm going to try to focus on getting as much fruit set, as many spurs as possible here, maybe a little bit here, and I'm not really too concerned with this new growth that it's put out. But what we can do is just come in here across the board and just take out a lot of this growth. I mean, it's not even really too much thought process of mine that's going into this. I essentially just want to come in here, induce as many fruiting spurs as possible, taking about, you know, I don't know, somewhere around half of the new growth of this last flush that came out. This is a lot of the new growth that came out after these fruits had finished fruiting. So they put out their crop for the year, and then they came in here and decided to put out new growth. And this is really, we're only gonna get really one more 
burst of growth before the season ends. And this is all just to control this size of these trees. It's really all it is. Um, and to get that fruit spurs coming in. So you can see now, we brought this a lot further back. It's a lot more manageable. It's probably somewhere around, you know, uh, I like the amount of systems and different things that are going on at, at this height here, but it's probably around six or seven feet, um, seven feet tall. And ideally what we should have done probably even more is get this, like this whole branch here should probably have been cut back here to then have this whole thing branch out more systematically, get a more denser structure to it. You can see it looks pretty thin. And these are just trees that unfortunately got off to a worse start, I think, personally, because we had them in pots and we were pruning them differently. And this has really only been the first year that they've been in the ground. A tree like this, which bared quite heavily and didn't grow all that much, I'm not gonna really touch this thing. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe cut it, come in here and, and prune out some of the wood that maybe doesn't look good. You know, you can obviously do that anytime you guys want. But there's really not a whole lot to this. Let's come over to these other trees over here. I'm gonna come in here and cut this off. And this is new growth up here, which actually we made some cuts prior and you can see where these new cuts we made earlier in the year, I think maybe we didn't prune this tree too much earlier in the summer, but I'm just gonna come in here and cut this, some of this top growth out. Nothing too crazy. I like how this tree is really forming a dense, you know, system of branches here. And ideally it should have been lower, right? It should have started down here, but that's not the case. But at least we're getting this dense formation here this is these are going to be larger trees just by default and just where this system of crazy branches kind of happened if you can get this to happen lower down on the tree at a younger age which is why when we plant these things we a lot of times will cut them back to our knee cut them back to knee height and that will get that system of branches forming lower which will then net you a smaller tree but you know it is what it is at this point i'm not too concerned with it Again, we're just coming in here on this new growth and bringing this back. You can see we made a cut here earlier in the summer and it put out these new shoots. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. That's all I'm doing is just keep coming in here, prune out some of this very vigorous growth. Keep these trees in check. Unfortunately, you can see a lot of these limbs even though this is new wood has no leaves on it and that's just a testament to our climate you know how uh this is a very vigorous shoot on this tree you can see how vigorous this is this is one of the taller shoots of the the trees right here so i'm going to come in here and just cut that out as much as i can and you can see we've really brought back the height of this particular tree. And honestly, it should probably even be you know, brought back even more. Maybe I'll come in here. If I decide, I may come in here and just say, all right, well, enough's enough. Look at this branch. Enough's enough. And in the wintertime, I could come in here and just prune uh, even more. Ideally though, we should be doing this in the summer pruning just does different things than the winter pruning. The winter pruning encourages more growth. The summer pruning encourages more fruits um, for next year. So I think it's a good idea, you know, if you're thinking about doing this, think about what your objective is. If you want your trees to grow, you know, come in here then and just start doing this in the winter time. Uh, there's not really too much thought that's going into this. And then also come in here and do this on a day that's dry. Uh, do this on a day that has very little rain in the forecast. Um, so I'm just coming in here and really, that's really all I'm gonna do is come in here and just kind of shave off the top of these. Really keep them contained to a certain height, you know, just draw a line this way and that's what they're all gonna pretty much look like. Is Cause I just don't want them to get too lanky. I want them to have these more dense systems as you see here. I want them to be a dense hedge. That's, that's what this whole goal 
of this whole area is, is to have all these different trees form a nice little hedge here, you know? Um, so let me take you guys out to one more tree, a couple more trees that we're gonna do this to. I would say some fruit trees you don't wanna do this to probably is the persimmon. Um, we still have to really figure out the persimmon here, guys, because look how vigorous that thing is. It's over 20 feet, I think. Um, it's, it's honestly, what I can do though is come in here and take out some of these branches that have been broken and just cut this out. This is not what we want. And a lot of this lower growth is kind of just being chopped away by people who mow the lawn and come in here anyway. So we can come in here and cut this out. No problem. This has got some damage on it. You know, anywhere you guys see some damaged or diseased wood, I think it's a good idea to take it out. But a lot of the pruning on these, unfortunately, on the persimmon, will really kind of send a signal to the tree that it wants to grow even more. So I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do with this tree yet. I really should get it myself up. There's a book out there that's pretty much got all the information on these trees. Really well written. It's like the the definitive guide for these trees but i don't know we'll figure it out these are my peaches here and my nectarines and these guys are the same way is that on this new growth here this one-year-old wood we're going to have our fruit buds and we're not going to have many fruits on this very vigorous shoot here it's just not going to happen um, what we're going to more see fruits are is on this these branches here that are coming downwards so kind of encouraging horizontal growth or downward growth and not pruning out that is gonna also help with fruit set. And you can see they've already sort of done this by themselves. I did come in here, I think, and I did some summer pruning, but I think these trees also naturally do this um, depending on the weather here and that the weather sometimes will, believe it or not, prune out the tips of these trees. Um, you know, maybe we'll have a lot of humidity one day and then all of a sudden we don't have a lot of humidity and then these branches kind of struggle a bit and believe it or not, then the tips kind of die and then it sends out these real awesome systems of branches and you can see, look how crazy this is. So this is like ideally what I wanted from the beginning with a lot of my trees and these guys have done that just really, really well. So I'm going to come in here and, and really not do a whole lot of pruning because it's already happened. I mean, look at how many branches are in here. Maybe I can thin this out a bit. This guy up here is very vigorous and the tallest of the bunch. So what I'm gonna do is take him out to kind of give this guy a bit more light. You know, this guy's not getting a whole lot of attention. Um, especially, look, you can see this is exactly what I mean by the tips dying back on their own. And then they send out laterals by themselves. This is like awesome how these peaches and nectarines work here. It's kind of crazy that I don't have to come in here really and do much uh, summer pruning. But I will come in here and I'm gonna take out a number of this growth up here because I don't want this tree to, to, to shade out the other tree in this system here. Do you know what I mean? There's a whole bunch, there's four trees in the same hole here and there's two trees in the same hole right here. They all have to be in balance with each other and if they're not, we're gonna have issues. So I'm gonna come in here and just bring this whole thing back, get this branching to happen even lower than it has. And this is gonna help keep this whole system of trees in check better, I think. Maybe I'll come in here and I'll take this, you know, this whole thing out for the most part, just to bring in more light to this section. You know, the light comes from this way, straight ahead, guys. This is west over here. So this tree is really kind of shading out the tree right behind it, which is on the north side of this whole planting. And the tree on the north side is gonna be the smallest, it's gonna be the weakest. So we need to pay attention to make sure that this is the biggest tree next year. And the last thing to do is just to come up there, I gotta 
probably put the camera down for this to get that that higher branch up there but you can see that's well we can come in here and just cut this out like that and this is kind of all we uh we're doing so i think that really explains it well guys um get the diseased wood out here come in here and really fix things up make it make sure you have the right system going on for the right purpose of what you have I think some other things we don't want to be doing this on is the figs. We don't want to be summer pruning. That's a big no. Um, we don't want to be doing this probably on the persimmons. Um, you can do this on the mulberries. In fact, people do this on mulberries, by the way, all the time. And this thing, by the way, we cut it back because our Illinois Everbearing got out of control. But what we could have done, honestly, is um, very easily had just let it go and just let the thing cut it back you know multiple times a summer in fact i've done that many many times is cut these trees back multiple times a summer and they fruit and a lot of people are doing this in tropical areas is that they can get multiple crops of mulberries that way by cutting them back so um, certainly very important something to, to pay attention to um, and you know it's not just like Oh, summer pruning for form, but a lot of this can get, actually get you some more fruit this way. Um, you know, when it comes to the blackberries and the raspberries, simply taking out those primocanes from the prior year is really all it is. Let me see the pears. You can do the same thing on the pear trees, guys. I haven't really wanted to prune these guys because they fruited so heavily. What I do want to do is get rid of a lot of these suckers down here at the bottom. This is unnecessary. This is not really gonna do a whole lot. Come in here and take out a lot of that. That's a weed. This is a nice little sucker right here that I've sort of just let this thing grow and this will probably just come out at some point. You know, we can come in here and, and take these out, but I think I'm gonna let these, these trees sort of go a bit, you know, let them fill out a bit more. You can see a lot of the growth is kind of bent downwards because of the heavy fruit set this year, which is a really good thing. Um, so that's kind of it. Oh, the grapes over here, we actually did some summer pruning already. I had some, some canes. You can see actually there's a cane right here on the ground that we took out maybe a week or two ago. Actually, probably a week ago. This is a leftover uh, grape cane that we took out on the European grapes. And uh, essentially all it is is just coming here and just taking this back. I didn't want this to get, these things to get too out of control. They come down here and they really attach themselves to the apples. They come around the other side and get themselves into the uh, asparagus and they get themselves into these peaches. So we just made some big cuts to kind of stop them in their tracks. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. We'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.